Thank you, Jeff, for that wonderful prelude, O Word of God incarnate. And friends, welcome to worship at Christ Covenant Church here in Harleysville, Pennsylvania, or wherever you are watching on video. We're glad you are all joining us here today, whether you're in the sanctuary or again, uh, joining us by video. I've got just a couple uh, announcements uh, here at the beginning of the service. Usually we do them mostly at the end, but we've got one or two things that will help us as we make our way through our service today. And uh, really the, the main thing is that uh, today is the first day uh, where we are starting our kids, our younger kids Sunday school ministry for the year. You know, we wanted to wait a little while uh, in September after kids went back to school to see how things were going. And we are beginning that ministry today. It's going to be like this. I think many of you know, uh, in a little while, we're gonna have our children's sermon where all the kids can come up to the front. And then after the children's sermon, all of the kids can go downstairs to the orange room for a Sunday school lesson. It isn't going to be just as, as wonderful as our cherub time has been in the past. This is going to be a, a bit different in that there's going to be a Bible lesson and a, uh, just a real Sunday school uh, lesson going on. We're thankful for our teachers that have been volunteering to, to lead that. We are still looking for a couple to fit in with the rotation. Uh, and the way we've got the rotation set up is if you could volunteer to help, you would teach six times during the whole year. Just six times. And wouldn't you want to be down with kids six times in a whole year? Think about that. And we're very grateful for a number of our teenagers as well who are going to be helping out in that ministry. And so um, I think that covers that uh, for as, as we move through our worship service. Once again, after our children's sermon today, that's when all of the kids will be going down uh, to their Sunday school time. And we'll have them go down the, the main aisle here because they'll be in our orange room. And so with that, once again, welcome to worship on this 21st Sunday after Pentecost on October 10th, 2021. And now let us continue in our service. Please join me in the responsive call to worship that is up on the screen. God has called each of us and all of us to lives of hope and service. We want to serve God, but sometimes life gets to be too difficult for us. Place your trust in God's power and love. Come, let us worship God, who is with us always. Praise God for God's eternal presence. Amen. Amen. And now will you pray with me the unison prayer. Lord, you have called us here this day for healing, hope, and transformation. As we listen to the scripture, pray our prayers, sing our hymns, and hear the words of wisdom, Open our hearts to hear your claim on our lives, that we may fully and joyfully serve you. Amen. Our opening song is Praise My Soul, the King of Heaven, and it is played for us by members of the Stuart Memorial Handbell Choir.
Well, that was wonderful. Thank you very much, those of you in the Stewart Memorial Handbell Choir. One of the things that I have really missed during this COVID time has been our children's sermon. And so it's wonderful to be able to be doing that today. And so I would invite any of the kids to come up to the front and join me right here. And some of the parents, if you wanna come up and join your young ones as well, you are certainly free and able to do that as well. So I invite the kids to join me right up in the front. And Miss Sandy is coming up to the front, too, and we're going to find out about that in a little while. Well, guys, it is so great to see each one of you. I want to ask just one or two questions, okay? So how many of you are, are there any of you that are three years old? Raise your hand if you're three. <laughs> Harvey, good, that's great. Are any of you four years old that are up here? All right. How about five? Are any of you five? All right, all right. And are any of you six? Oh, wow. How about seven? How about eight? Eight, wow, that's so awesome. And Miss Sandy, we won't go into you and me. No. Not at all. She goes one day at a time, that's right. Well, one thing that we're gonna do today is this. We're going to talk about a book that we love. And let's see, do any of you know maybe what I'm talking about when I say a book that we love in church? Does it, can anybody think of a book that we love in church? Let's see. Maybe I'll ask one of our big kids. Miss Sandy, what book might I be thinking about that we love that helps us know what God wants us to do? What book would that be? The best book in all the world, the Bible. She says, the best book in all the world, the Bible. Well, sometimes we think, what is the Bible? Boy, what is the Bible? Well, here we go. This is what the Bible is. Hit it, Miss Carla. The B-I-B-L-E. Yes, that's the book for me. I stand alone on the word of God. The B-I-B-L-E. Let's all sing that together two more times through about the Bible. All right, and the kids, you can join in as well. Ready? The B-I-B-L-E. Yes, that's the book for me. I stand alone on the word of God. The B-I-B-L-E. One more time. job. Give yourselves a hand. We love the Bible and we think it's great. And one thing that we do at, at church here at Christ Covenant is that when kids get to be a certain age, we give you a Bible as a present. And so Miss Sandy has, I think, two Bibles to give to kids today. And that's to Murphy and to Maeve. So Miss Sandy, if you could stand up and let's see. Murphy, can you go say hi to Miss Sandy and Maeve too? That would be great. All right. So that's one thing our Christian formation team does each year when kids get to be a certain age. And so now Maeve and Murphy, you have a Bible as a present. And maybe, just maybe, Sometimes you can read about God and about God's love for you and about how Jesus loves everyone, including all of us. And so I want to say thanks to our Christian formation team. Thanks to Miss Carla for helping us out with playing the B-I-B-L-E. And thanks to all of you for singing and praying and supporting our Sunday school ministry here at Christ Covenant Church. And so let's pray, okay? God, thank you for this day, and thank you for your love for all of us. Thank you for the Bible. Thank you for our Sunday school ministry, for adults, for youth group, and for the younger kids. And we ask you to bless each of those ministries. And today, we ask a special prayer of blessing for our first Sunday school time of the fall for our younger kids. And thank you for the teachers and the teenage helpers as well. 
Thank you again for your love for us. And we pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so now you kids, you can, Miss Sandy is going to go lead you down to Sunday school. And if you can follow her, that's great. And I know that Ben Painter is a helper today. And I think Angela Giampa is going to be a helper as well today. And so we're very thankful for all of you. Good morning. We'll be reading from Isaiah, chapter 55, verses 10 to 13. As the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return to it without watering the earth and making it bud and flourish so that it yields seed for the sower and bread for the eater, so is my word that goes out from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. You will go out in joy and be led forth in peace. The mountains and hills will burst into song before you, and all the trees of the field will clap their hands. Instead of the thorn bush will grow the juniper, and instead of briars, the myrtle will grow. This will be for the Lord's renown, for an everlasting sign which will endure forever. And our second text for today, which is going to be the text we base our sermon on this morning, is from 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 14 through 17. 2 Timothy 3, 14 through 17. Paul writes to Timothy and says, But as for you, and he writes to us as well, But as for you, continue in what you have learned and have become convinced of, because you know those from whom you learned it, and how from infancy you have known the Holy Scriptures which are able to make you wise for salvation through Christ Jesus. All scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. And may God add a blessing to this, the reading of his holy word. And just a little note about that in, you know, that Second Timothy text. It talks about how, Timothy, how you have learned this from infancy. That's a pretty good uh, thought for us about the ministry that we have to our toddlers and our young, younger kids like this Sunday school ministry that we're doing right now. Um, So sometimes we pastors try to be kind of funny, and sometimes we're not at all. <laughs> and uh, I saw a funny, uh, I thought, saw what I thought was very funny clergy humor on one of the clergy pages that Pastor Kathy and I go to on Facebook. I'm holding in my hand some of those, you know, the little communion cups. And the, the picture had, you know, somebody holding those communion cups like that, and it said, this year, when people trick or treat at pastors' houses, <laughs> so, <laughs> I thought it was pretty funny. <clears throat> well, friends, grace and peace to each of you from our Lord, Savior, and friend Jesus Christ. Thank you. Well, this morning uh, we are beginning a six-week series that takes us up to about Thanksgiving, a six-week series featuring our covenant affirmations. We're part of the Evangelical Covenant Church, and we have these affirmations that we talk about. Uh, in the covenant, we say that we are a non-creedal church, a non-creedal church. And what does that mean, to be a non-creedal church? Well, in some faith traditions and some denominations, uh, 
to be an active part of that uh, church or denomination or to be a member of that church or denomination. Uh, you know, you say that you believe in the Bible and that you also confess that you hold to some sometimes really specific other points that are defined uh, in some writings that, that people have. Uh, for, for some Presbyterians, that is uh, sometimes the, the Westminster Catechism, and for some Lutherans, like our good friends across the street, that's the Augsburg Confession. In the covenant, we don't do that. We say we're non-creedal. Uh, we do uh, hold to the historic creeds of the church, the Apostles' Creed, the Nicene Creed, that are really universal, that point out in broad strokes what we believe about God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. But in those, you don't get down into the specifics like some of the creeds do about uh, what exactly happens in baptism, what exactly happens in, in communion. Uh, we don't go and try to define all of that stuff. We don't do that. Um, in our six-week series, we're going to look at uh, one affirmation each week. We have six of them. And now you might ask, uh, as many people have, what's the difference between an affirmation and a creed? What, what's the difference? Well, as I view it, as I look at it, I think an affirmation is much more broad in scope, and the, the creeds can be very specific in scope. An imperfect illustration is this. We affirm apple pie. We affirm apple pie. Whether you use store-bought crust or homemade, doesn't matter. Canned apples or fresh, okay. Macintosh, Granny Smith, the best of all apples, Honeycrisp, you know, it doesn't really matter. Uh, real butter or margarine, a little bit of cinnamon, a lot of bit of cinnamon, serve it hot, serve it cold, doesn't matter. Serve it plain, serve it with ice cream. If you're from Vermont, you serve it with cheddar cheese. Hey, go for it. It's apple pie. We affirm apple pie. This is affirming apple pie. And for illustration's sake, as a creed, we might say this. We confess that we like apple pie, but only with homemade crust, red delicious apples, one teaspoon of cinnamon, served hot with vanilla ice cream. So you can kind of see how we can look at affirmations and creeds like that. Uh, for some people, the affirming apple pie is great. And for some people, the confessional apple pie is great. For some people, the covenant affirmations are great, and for some people, confessions like the Westminster Catechism are great as well. We're pro-affirmation, we're pro uh, the co confessions of the creeds. What we want is to have people be drawn closer to Christ, their faith strengthened so that they can minister how God wants them to minister. The first affirmation in the covenant affirmations is the centrality of the word of God and really, the origin of this is in historic Christianity, uh, keeping, keeping the Bible central. Uh, Timothy wrote about it, right, or Paul wrote about it, writing to Timothy about Scripture. In our confirmation lessons, one of the catechisms, or what we call nowadays building blocks, uh, says this, what, what, what do you believe about the Bible? And the answer is, uh, we believe that the Holy Scriptures, the Old and New Testament, is, it's, are the Word of God and the only perfect rule for faith, doctrine, and conduct. About the Word of God, uh, recall what Jody just read for us from Isaiah 55 just a bit ago. That God declares and promises, My word that goes out from my mouth, it will not return to me empty but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. And we interpret that as uh, the Bible is the word of God for us. It accomplishes what God wants. And the Apostle Paul, as I just noted, wrote to Timothy and said, all scripture is God breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting and training in righteousness so that the servant of God, and that's all of us, we're all servants of God, so that we at Christ's covenant may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. 
this same scripture, as I said, is useful for us. It's good for us, as it was for uh, a giant of the faith, Martin Luther, one of the great reformers of the church who really stressed the importance of the Bible. In his day, the Bible was written in Latin and the people couldn't read it. So he translated it into German. And some of your great, 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 great grandparents read that Bible that Martin Luther translated into German. Of the Bible, the word of God, Martin Luther said, from the beginning of my reformation, I have asked God to send me neither dreams nor visions nor angels, but to give me the right understanding of his word the Holy Scriptures, for as long as I have God's word, I know that I am walking in his way and that I shall not fall into any error or delusion. And very instructive for us covenanters as well is, uh, are these words from Philip Jacob Spainer. Uh, he was German as well. He was what uh, some people call a, a, a leader in a movement called pietism. And we trace our spiritual heritage to the pietist movement. Others do the same thing as well. The Evangelical Free Church, uh, the Baptist General Conference, um, the Moravians also uh, chart their heritage back to, uh, to uh, these pietists like Philip Jacob Spainer. Uh, and he wrote this in 1675. Spainer wrote this in a book called Pia Desideria, which is pious desires, desi pious, wanting to be more pious or more holy. He wrote this, and he, uh, it was about uh, some proposals for re renewal in the life of the church. And his first concern, his first concern had to do with the centrality of the word of God in the life of the local congregation and in the life of local uh, of believers like, like each of us. Spainer said this, thought should be given to a more extensive use of the word of God among us. We know that by nature we have no good in us. If there is to be any good in us, it must be brought about by God. To this end, the word of God is the powerful means since faith must be enkindled through the gospel. The more at home, this is great, the more at home the word of God is among us, the more we shall bring about faith and its fruits. That last sentence again. The more at home the word of God is among us, the more we shall bring about faith and its fruits. And that's one reason why we and our Christian formation team give Bibles to young kids when they're just starting to read, to learn to read. We want the Bible to be part of their, their reading, to be part of their life, to be part of their faith <coughs> formation. It's really important, really instructive, this, this sentence from Spainer. When the word of God is more and more with us, not just the young kids, but more and more with each of us, the more our faith will be strengthened God will be glorified, and more and more we will be able to share and show the love of Christ with others. This is indeed what we are called to do, and all of it rests on the affirmation that we're talking about this morning. A little practical illustration. If I if I wanted to be able to know and explain to others all about the works of William Shakespeare, who Pastor Kathy is not related to, uh, last week I said she was related to him somehow. I was 100% wrong on that. Uh, <laughs> it, just admit it when you're wrong, you know. If, if I wanted to learn about William Shakespeare, uh, the best way to do it wouldn't just be thinking about it and just pulling, you know, phrases out of the air, just kind of wandering about, not knowing anything about it, the best way to learn about Shakespeare would be to do things like read Hamlet and Macbeth and all's well that ends well. Likewise, to grow and be strengthened in our faith and be prepared to serve, gaining understanding of all of this and of our faith, we actually learn from the Bible. Actually, learning from the Bible is important. One might say, 
even central to, central to our faith and our Christian life. Well, one of the ways that uh, early covenanters uh, in Sweden uh, took the Bible seriously was uh, to, to take, took, to take the Bible seriously was uh, and made central to their lives and faith was to gather together, to join together, not just in worship like we are doing today, but also to be together and, and to be able to study the Bible together and pray with one another. Uh, these small groups that they gathered in were called conventicles, and there's a long history about that name. Uh, and because when they gathered in these conventicles, and because of their time together, and because they did a lot of Bible reading uh, at that time, early covenanters in Sweden were given the nickname Lesere, Lesere, which means readers. They were called readers. Uh, when faced with a question about life and faith, these Swedish covenanters would ask each other, uh, not, hey, what does the newspaper say? Uh, what does Farmer Anderson say? Uh, what does the postman say about this? They would ask each other this question. Var står det skrivet? Var står det skrivet? Where is it written? Where is it written? Where is it written in the Bible? The answer to these things. How we should live. How we can better love one another. How we can better serve God. Where is it written? For the big questions, indeed for questions at all in life, they would turn to the Bible. They were known for their study and reading of the Bible. And friends, this isn't unknown to us as well. This pattern, this practice, this isn't unknown to us. The idea of gathering together for Bible study and for encouragement and prayer with one another. Here at Christ's Covenant, we gather in similar ways with adult Sunday school, Friday night light, youth group, brothers in faith small group, uh, uh, junior and senior high Sunday school, and, and others. And we think teaching the Bible and about Jesus is important for our younger kids as well. Evidence today. The giving of Bibles to young kids and the resuming of our Sunday school ministry for these younger ones. And so friends, throughout the two millennia of our Christian faith, the 188 years of this congregation, the 136 years of the Covenant Church in North America, and our life together today, we keep central, have kept central, and will keep central to our life and faith, the Word of God, the Bible. In the following weeks, as we move through the other five covenant affirmations, we will see how all of these affirmations flow out of the first affirmation, similar to how all the Ten Commandments flow out of the first commandment, how all of the Ten uh, Articles in the Bill of Rights flow out of that first uh, <coughs> amendment in the Bill of Rights. We look forward to this series as we look at the other affirmations in the weeks to come. The necessity of the new birth, a commitment to the whole mission of the church, the church as a fellowship of believers, a conscious dependence on the Holy Spirit, and the reality of freedom in Christ. As we close our time uh, together today, we would encourage you, Pastor Kathy and I, we would encourage you to remember that we as a, as a covenant church and we as Christ Covenant Church affirm in our lives and in our faith the centrality of the Word of God in your life away from this building this week how will you affirm the centrality of the Word of God in your life as you interact with your family your friends your co-workers and anyone else you meet. How will you affirm that and so give honor and glory to God? Amen.
Let us turn to God in prayer. God, we thank you for this word, and we thank you for your word. We thank you for your faithfulness to us, and for the faithfulness of many who have brought your word to us throughout the centuries and centuries. We ask God for open hearts and open minds and for your spirit to continue speaking to us and through us, even in those times when we might want to turn away from your word and we might want to just kind of say, nah, no thanks God, not now, no thanks spirit. We thank you for the many times that your spirit nudges us and we pray for the patience and the strength to continue waiting and listening to your word in whatever ways that your word is brought to us, God. Thank you. God, we thank you for this week, for this day, for this gathering, and this body of Christ representing the worldwide global body of Christ. We thank you for the freedom to worship, and we pray for persecuted Christians, for those who are not free to worship. We pray for protection for them. And God, we pray not only for, for Christians, we also pray for all who are persecuted for their faith, for whatever they believe in. And God, we lift up our world and nation. We are still so divided and still turning to violence to solve our divisions and still turning to other methods and mechanisms and turning on one another or to other pursuits. God, we ask that you would turn our hearts we ask that you would forgive us if there are ways that we have turned away from you and turned to other methods to heal divisions or to neglect divisions or to just hide our anger or frustrations of whatever they are. We ask God for forgiveness. And we pray for those areas of the world that where violence is rampant or violence is popping up, God, we ask that you would that you would protect those, protect the innocent, and God, that you would bring communication methods to governments and to leaders and to those that need to talk and communicate and bring reconciliation. We pray for those where injustice, where, for those who are victims of injustices, God. God, we pray for those of us for whom injustices are, have been done or are being done. We ask, God, that you would stop those and heal us. And God, if we have committed injustices against others, we ask that you would forgive us and turn our hearts so that we could repent and turn away from those actions and make us aware of those. God, we pray for those who provide resources and care for your people in need, including missions and mission agencies and individuals who serve globally and locally and regionally. And we pray, God, for those struggling with COVID and COVID-related effects and decisions. And we continue to pray for those who have not had access to vaccines and the care that many in this nation and other developed nations have had access to. We lift up residents and staff of local retirement communities where COVID is present, protect and heal. God, for those who are sick and facing medical situations and other concerns, we lift these up to you. Kitty Lepp, Claude Bevan and Kathy, Charlotte and Dave Williams, Joan Whitney, Barb Groff, Shirley Moyer, those who are struggling because they are lonely and feeling isolated, those who are overwhelmed by whatever is overwhelming. There are so many options, God, fill in the blank. There are so many options to overwhelm. Those who are struggling with grief, whether recent or years old or decades old, those who are struggling with grief from other losses that aren't necessarily the loss of loved ones, but loss of other things. God, those who are struggling with transitions, changes in their life. And God, those who are struggling from dealing with minor things, minor aches and pains, but they 
just continue and linger. And things such as my child or I, I struggle with a cough or a sniffle and do I need to go get tested for COVID and do I send my kid to school or what do I do, God? Those little things that have become, <laughs> used to be minor, but now are struggles from this pandemic, God. We are weary, we are tired, and God, we offer all of these to you. And now, God, we take a moment of silence to offer to you other concerns or other joys that are on our hearts and minds. We offer these to you right now. God, we thank you that whatever is going on and whatever has gone on and will go on, that you are present, that you are faithful, whether we are always aware of your faithfulness or not, God, you are faithful and you are good. We thank you again for this gathered community, virtual, physical. We thank you for this community. We thank you for the gift of prayer. We thank you, God, for the gathering of Sunday school downstairs today, for those kids and those helpers and volunteers. And we offer these prayers and the many other prayers on our hearts and minds. We offer to you through the powerful name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who taught each of us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our closing hymn is You Shall Go Out With Joy. It's in the blue hymnal 663, and it will also be up on the screen. You shall go out with joy. And please stand as you are able. Yes, and there is a point during this hymn which requires some clapping. So if you are so obliged to clap, so led to clap, and even if you're not led to clap, feel free to clap. It's very fun. You shall go out with joy
couple opportunities for clapping your hands today, right? And that's fantastic. Well, friends, there's uh, time for announcements, and we've always got a few announcements. Uh, most of these, or many of these, can be found in your insights that is always sent to you. Sometimes Thursday, sometimes Friday, sometimes Saturday, but always in preparation for worship on Sunday morning, and we're so grateful for that. A couple things. Uh, we are getting the nominating committee, as we've mentioned in the past few weeks. Our annual meeting is, going to, is in November. Yeah, and there are some roles and positions in leadership, elected roles and positions in leadership that we will be needing to uh, nominate people for to fill. And so if you're being led to uh, be in any part of leadership, please let us know and maybe we can fill you in. Uh, some of the people on the leadership, um, um, sorry, the nominating committee, Pastor Kathy, Jeff Reifsneider, uh, Wendy, Nicole, myself, Bruce Metz, and uh, please, uh, Expect a phone call as well from, from them. And uh, also coming up, uh, our senior adult ministry will be meeting again uh, on the 19th, Tuesday the 19th, watching a movie in Fellowship Hall called We Bought a Zoo. We Bought a Zoo, so that's good for those people in our senior adult ministry. Uh, youth group today, we're going to be going to uh, Mary Mead to do the uh, corn maze, and of course there's biblical application to wandering around, like knowing not what you're doing, but eventually reaching your goal. We'll see what that is. And uh, I think, oh, uh, also uh, in the uh, insights, we're be resuming our food collection for various uh, ministries, and the, bas the buckets or the baskets or the bins, whatever they are, uh, if you bring food in, you can put them in the bins, and they're in the narthex underneath that one table, just right out there. And so I think that's all of the announcements that I have, um, but uh, Wendy and, and Nicole, our church co-chairs, uh, have an announcement, or so I've been told. <laughs> Still on? Yay. Hi, everybody. Um, Jim and Kathy, can we ask you to come over? Jeff, Carla, Meredith, and I think Heidi's downstairs, but that's okay. Hi, is Heidi here? Oh, okay. Well, if you guys could come on up. Today is Pastor Appreciation Sunday. A little birdie told us, so here we are, Pastor Appreciation Sunday. So in addition to thanking Jim, Kathy, for being our true leaders, it doesn't just take a coach, it takes a team. So on Pastor Appreciation Sunday, we'd like to thank Jim and Kathy, Meredith, Carla, Jeff, for their years and weeks of service. <laughs> uh, in a pandemic like this, you know, thank you for keeping us all together and keeping us closer than ever. So on behalf of Christ Covenant Church, we wanted to give you a little something that you can share with the staff as well. So this is a gift card to the mill. Oh, we know you like it there, so whether you can get together for lunch or dinner or even just order you know, when you're here, we want you to enjoy this on behalf of everyone. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. I do what I'm told. Thank you. Go team. I was going to say something about this. Go Go team is right. Wait a second. And now, receive the benediction. May the God of grace. Which, may the grace of Christ, which daily renews us, and the love of God, which enables us to love all, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, which unites us in one body, make us eager to obey the will of God until we meet again through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our postlude today is How Firm a Foundation, and Jeff will bless us with that. And so, friends, go in peace and serve the Lord.
Thank you.